Hello and welcome. Now that we have learned all the methods, we can talk about how to replace different textures in a composition. The piece of music you see is actually a modified, heroic version of the melody we used in previous lectures. In other words, I did it a little differently while still maintaining the basic melodic and harmonic ideas. Here's my orchestration plan for this composition. First, create an introduction, then orchestrate the first four bars of the melody in a homophonic style. Next, make the texture more complex, starting with the fifth bar. So I want to create a climax by adding a polyphonic and a chordal texture. Let's do it. First of all, let's start with creating a rhythmic pattern for percussion instruments. Of course, the rhythm we choose will determine how the orchestration will develop. I think of a figure in the combination of two instruments, the snare drum and congas. This is a common ethnic rhythm of many peoples, including Azerbaijan. First, make the pattern a little simple and then, as the texture gets more complex, we'll enrich it with melismas. The dynamic for the snare drum will be piano because it's the secondary element of the main rhythm played by the conga. Or you can use more powerful dynamics on the snare drum if you are not going to add other drums. Now let's move on to the main instrument. In this section, the conga and the tumba emphasize the main beats of the rhythm. They will be more complex later. The strokes used here are the open, slap and tip. Let's listen to them all together. As I said earlier, the ability to build a good rhythm itself helps to think of interesting elements in the orchestration process. Let's apply the same rhythmic figuration to the violas. For this, I will use a hybrid method including both break and stretch methods. So, while the first notes are broken horizontally, the following notes will be arpeggiated. Cellos can enhance and add the body to the figure, doubling with the violas. To get an active in the first piece, the first note will be written an active below. First and second violins will be added in the next bars. Double basses play the bass line. Let's listen. This introduction can be filled with episodic elements, but for the introduction to be heard heroically, it must be simple and decisive. Now let's move on to the texture 28A. The melody will be performed at the fourth dynamic of the four horns. This is a brilliant register of the horns. The normal and strong accents make the music more heroic. What about the percussions? Let's keep the snare unchanged, but fill the congas with more anamas to make a difference than the previous bars.
The hybrid method remains unchanged except for the harmonic change. So the first bar is the A minor. Then it goes to the E minor. Then to the F major. Only the last bar has an upward direction since the melody goes to the climax. The counterbase will be doubled by bassoons. We have done the hybrid method. Now I'm gonna add the spread method below the melody. The close four part harmony will be played by the brass section. The dynamic marking should be piano or maybe mezzo piano to keep the soft background of the horns. The crescendo markings are to be used to add the gradual climax to the next page. Now let's overlay the stretch static. Generally, in film scoring, these kinds of figures are always used in unison or single lined, not to dominate the melody. But in concert music, the figures are frequently extended with chordal extensions. It can be open part writing or close. But today we are gonna make a film music style texture, hence let's just double them in unison. Let me remind you that the figures on the violins can be applied to the high woodwinds, while the violins will be doubled with the horns. Actually, the low G and D strings of the violins will reduce the warm timbre of the horns. So the texture A is ready. The next texture 28B will contain chordal and polyphonic elements. But first, let's check out what instruments can be chosen. Chart number 1 will show you how to do this correctly. So the fact that the melody boundaries are between G3 and A4 opens up a lot of possibility for us. The horns are in their best of best register. If add the trumpets above them, then they will be in their best of best register, right? There is also one more active, where the violins or flutes can be added. The last active is well suited with a piccolo, xylophone and piano. This is a white space four part melodic device. That's why we learned this chart in our previous lectures. So the hierarchy of the instruments throughout the registers will be as follows. Horns, trumpets, violins or flutes, piccolo, piano or xylophone. I will use the horns, trumpets, violins and piano. Let's start to make a chordal device. So, how to apply the four part writing to the single light melody? To do this, you need to add the cut tones of the harmony to the composition of the melodic line. First, you must assign the melody to any instrument, and then you fill in the bottom or top of it with other instruments. So, in my case, let the horns continue the melodic phrase as before. Now, let's expand it with chordal extension. Generally, the overlaying technique of the code voicing is the common choice of the composers. So, the A minor will be used. Two trumpets are above the horns and take the code tones, while the top trumpet doubles the melody. That's all. The next bar is the D major, then it resolves to the unison the F major, and again the unison. The fourth bar starts with the G major and goes to the C major. Since this is the climax, you can continue the melodic idea or just write the C major chord. 
The final chord is the A major. This is a basic form of writing, however it can be filled with different elements or can be expanded one more time. For example, let's expand the lower portion of the melody. The second and fourth horns take the cut tones of the harmony. Starting from the fourth bar, the horns move in actives. Let's do one more change. Instead of long notes, ba 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 ba, write the ba 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 ba. Just break the trumpet pass to add the fanfare sound. The score sounds colorful and interesting when the ensemble alternates between playing the harmony and sometimes the melody. For example, in the previous bars, the violins performed the harmonic background. Let's have them play a melody. By doing this, we also reduce the weight of the harmonic background. Because the melody itself is already filled with chordal tones. Refilling that register with arpeggio-like harmony will reduce the brightness of the melody. Thus, the first and second violins take the melody and active above the trumpets. I use a single line device for the violins since it will be nonsensical to fill all registers with chordal melodies. No, if you want to make the strings chordal, then you have to single line the trumpets. This kind of approach can be considered the most appropriate option for film scores. The next instrument is the piano. Unlike violins, this instrument is considered a weak instrument, so filling its part with chords will not create tension in the register. Let's listen to all of them. As you can see, there is a gap between texture A and B. We can use episodic stretch rounds to fill this transition. So we have to replace the last quarter note part of the previous bar with rounds. You can make it whatever you want, be it chromatic or diatonic. The important thing is that the transition is logical and comfortable for the performers. We can add the same to the piano. Of course, the tremolo of the suspended cymbal is indispensable. Also, it will be interesting if we emphasize the upbeat of the French horn with the timpani. If you want, you can use rounds at the end of the score. Again, I'm going to remove the quarter and add the chromatic rounds instead. I'm keeping the wooden part empty for now, maybe we'll implement something else for them. So we finished the instrumentation of the main melody. Let's think about the orchestration of polyphonic movement in the bass line. Pay attention, some merits should be considered. First, the instruments that lead the main melody are quite strong. They are arranged along several registers. Second, they are rich in articulations that will create a fullness. Third, they play with strong dynamics. So we have to look at the instruments will be equal in thanks to them. If you use the low woodwinds, they will be weaker against the brass and strings. 
even they are combined with strings, we will not be able to get the wanted fullness. The best choice will be the brass. Let's start with the two trombones playing in unison. Then add a bass trombone. In bar 12, one of the trombones will double the home part. A bass trombone will join them in the 10th bar to gradually increase the power. But what about the tuba? One nuance should be taken into account. If there is a wide space between the secondary melody and the bass line, then the tuba can play the bass line. Otherwise, if the secondary melody is in very low registers, then the most logical choice would be to remove the bass line entirely and give the tuba a secondary theme. Since there is plenty of space left in this piece, I'll use the tuba on the bass line. The G note will be effective since this is a common tone of the G major and C major. The tuba will be doubled by bassoons and contrabasses. While the left hand of the piano will be an active bloid. Let the hybrid method keep the pulsation until the end of the piece. Of course, they should still be arranged according to the harmony of each bar. The rhythm section will be a bit different than before since the open strikes are replaced with the slaps. I do it for the drive and energy. In the 13th bar, the performer will replace the suspended symbol with the piatti. That's why we inform him a few bars in advance. As you can see, the dynamics of the background are also increased since the melody is at the fourth dynamic. Strings balance among themselves and brass balances among themselves. So basically, we have finished the main orchestration of this part. But let's give something to the woodwinds so that they don't resent us. If you want, you can have them play a melody above the trumpets. But today I will talk about a slightly different technique, uncalculated tremolo. These tremolos also belong to the spread method. And measured tremolos or trills are useful tools for the orchestration. For example, if the sketch has a four-part chord, but you only have two instruments, then the tremolo technique will help you play that chord. The tremolo between A and C can be played on the clarinet, and between E and G on the flute. The rapid transition or alternation of these four voices gives the listener the impression of a four-part harmony playing at the same time. That's why I classify this technique as a spread method. But are tremolos on all intervals possible on every instrument? More detailed information about the possible intervals is available in the PDA file adapted from Studying Wind Orchestration Lessons by Thomas Kass. Generally speaking, the minor and major seconds, minor and major thirds, tremolos are frequently used in symphonic literature. As the intervals become wider, the difficulties are increased depending on the instrument. 
But today I'm gonna interlay the major second intervals between the main melodic device. So, two clanes, an English horn, and two oboes play the lower tremolos, while two flutes are an active above them. These are the single line tremolos. However, the chordal tremolos also work well. The episodic runs applied to strings and piano will also be added to the woodwinds. The last piece of the sketch will be performed by the lower instruments. One of the course members asked what we should pay attention to when changing orchestral pictures, that is textures. First, change the registers. If the melody in the first texture is in the medium register, then in the second texture change its position to high or low register. Second, change the dynamics. If the first texture is piano, then the second texture may be mezzo forte or forte. Change the accompaniments and change the instruments. For example, I gave the violins the stretch static method in the previous texture 28A. But now I gave them a melody instead. And the tremolos are played by woodwinds. There could be another option. For example, if I had given the woodwinds the stretch static method in the previous texture 28A, I would have given them a melody in the next texture. Violins would have to play the tremolos. Conclusion The instruments always should change the mission in the score. The same group must play the harmony and then the melody. So we have done the whole score. Let's listen to the final orchestration. Thanks for watching. See you soon.